Welcome, I'm Bev Adams. I own an independent paper crafting business showcasing products from Stampin' Up. I made this easel card with products from Stampin' Up. I sell these products and also a few items to make crafting convenient. I have the free detailed directions for this project on my website. You'll be able to click the links for the products that you would like to be taken to my online store at Stampin' Up. You'll see where to find all of that at the end of this video, so don't worry about taking notes. It's time to put stamps, ink, and paper together. I think for this video, I'll let you go to my website and get the directions where it's got all of the cutting and all the cardstock that you need. I'm using Elegantly Said, which I think is absolutely gorgeous. And it's really got a lot of variety here. I think that the font on the greetings is very beautiful. So let me show you how I do it. This is called an easel card. Easel cards are very simple to make. I cut this cardstock in half the long way this time, score it in half, and then add another score line halfway to this one. And that works whether your card is going this way or this way. So in this case, I've scored it two and three quarters and five and a half. I am using the metallic embossing powders. We used to sell these individually, and now we're selling them together as a bundle, and you get copper, gold, and silver together. We're gonna use the gold embossing powder today, and and Versamark ink, and we'll use the heat tool, and some of this lovely, lovely gold fine art ribbon. Elegantly said, comes as a bundle with the elegant tag punch. You can save yourself 10%. And with Elegantly said, there is this simply elegant specialty designer series paper isn't that just gorgeous? And there is some basic black and basic gray, very vanilla and basic white, copper, gold, and silver. We're going to be doing all of our stamping with the Versamark. I'm pulling in my Stamparatus. I don't know if it'll make a difference, but I'm gonna try rubbing this with just a tissue. This tissue does not have any lotion in it, and I'm thinking it might help with static. We'll see. And I'm using this large detailed stamp. And I wanna put that in this corner. And my greeting, it comes with thank you. It, there's a birthday, there's a love stories. And I wanna put this in the bottom right. And I'm pulling this over and picking that up. And I think I don't want the foam pad here. I'm going to put my strip up here This goes right in the middle. This swirly piece goes underneath. And I want to put those as close as I can get them. If that's not exactly in the middle, it's okay. Pick up all three of these. I think I need to move my magnet a bit. And I want to check this side and make sure that these greetings are lined up with the lines on the Stamparatus. This one looks a little crooked. And I like to put either a stamp pad or a stamp case underneath and pat my ink on here. And 
press. My friend Gidget makes this press to get a good even press. And you really can't see anything on the camera, I don't think, but I'm tilting it. Oh, I guess you can. I'm tilting it to make sure I've got good coverage everywhere. That looks great. And I need some scratch paper, just any piece of junk mail or bill. And put this on there. Cover up my ink and get the gold embossing powder. And you can sprinkle liberally on this. If you have any flecks, you want to get those off if you can. Sometimes you can do that with flicking. And I did not brush this one with the paper. I did this. I think that actually may make a difference. I'll try that again next time I emboss. If you have a tiny paintbrush, you can get any random pieces off that way too. Set those aside so you don't brush the powder off of them and put all of the powder back in the tub. And here's where the magic happens. This is a kind of a gold, it does look gold in the video, but in real life it looks kind of brown and um, powdery. So I turn on my heat tool and that brown powdery will kind of melt and become a more solid, shiny gold image. And I think you can see that magic happening there. This does get very hot, so you don't want to blow right on your fingers. So pretty. And my surface is a plastic surface. I do not want to use my heat tool on that because it would warp my mat. Ask me how I know. Then before you do anything more, just check everywhere because when that powder is powder, it brushes off easily. Right now it's a little bit soft and melty. And so I want to give that a chance to cool off. While it's cooling off, I'm going to put my card together. I'm putting my gold designer series paper on this piece right here. This piece right here is the easel part, and so this is what stands up. I want to put this on directly, but I do not want to get any adhesive on the top above the fold. So a lot of times what I'll do is just put it here. Just be sure, my, this card does not go all the way to the edge, so don't let your adhesive go all the way to the edge. Then you can put adhesive on this piece and be sure not to go above halfway. We're going to be using just such a tiny bit of that ribbon. trim. And then we're going to put this piece on the front with stamped dimensionals.
and this piece is not going in the center. I'm going toward the bottom left. And then we need our piece for the inside. One version of this card, I used this stamp for, on the sides and it's beautiful. So I'm just putting this on the inside. And then for an easel card, you need some sort of a stop. So I'm using that punch to make this into a stop. And let me show you this punch. This is kind of an unusual looking punch. And you can punch it just as it is. And that's pretty. You can certainly use that any direction you want. This piece makes me think of all kinds of possibilities with that as well. And you can use either end of this as an end for a banner kind of thing. If we push our um, one and three quarters, and you actually want to have it just a hair less than one and three quarters, and pull it through. And I'm, I think I'm going to make this a little bit shorter, so I'm paying attention to how far this is from the print. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the other side. And we're just putting it through and then pulling it through this way and trying to get that distance to be about the same. You can use either end to punch the ends of your strip. It's just a little bit harder to get this end in. So if you pay attention to where it's going in the mechanism in there, that's where you're going to want to aim your end. And I find it a little bit harder to, to work it in there. But you can punch that. And of course you can make these strips as long or short as you want. And so that makes a pretty punch too. And so this one's a little bit smaller than my sample. And we want to raise this up. So I'm putting some dimensionals on here. We could add some mini dimensionals on the ends here. And where this goes depends on how steep you want this easel. So if you want it to be kind of a gentle slope, you can put this down low. You can put it right smack dab in the middle. And there you go. I don't know if you can see how that works. I thought I would look to see if there was any difference of the gold embossing. This is the this is the gold embossing that I already had. This is the new gold embossing. And I think the new, I don't know if it shows up on the video or not, but I think that the new is shinier and um, maybe even elevated a little bit. I like it. I will definitely recommend the new embossing powder. I did not decorate my envelope, but I, I'm sitting here but I'm thinking of all the possibilities of stamping this on the envelope. I think it would look lovely. So that's it. Here is the web address for this project where you'll find the free detailed directions and links for the products I used. You'll be able to click the links to be taken to my online store at Stampin' Up! Also on my website, you can click home near the top of the page to find lots of resources. Under shop, you can find the products I offer to make crafting more convenient, how to get free products with my frequent shopper rewards, and a link to my online store at Stampin' Up!
Click Inspiration to scroll all my projects back to 2011, most with detailed directions and videos. Though the products in those older projects have been retired, you may find techniques, layouts, and color combinations to inspire you today. If you're new to stamping, you might want to take a look at the basics. You'll find out how to cut card bases and layers, and what's special about Stampin' Up! and some of my favorite tools. Under Organization, you'll find tons of free resources such as catalog tabs, labels and case inserts, color tools, and much more. You can take a tour of my craft wall. More organization means more time for crafting. Come stamp with me here in Ventura County, California, or get the best deal of all and join my team of crafters. The team is called SIP Together and it stands for Stamps, Ink, and Paper Together. The team is made of crafters who want to save money on the products they buy, share with a few friends, or grow a business like mine. Be sure to subscribe to my website and on YouTube. Talk to you soon. Bye.